Ho, 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 Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everybody. It's me, Turbo Claus, and welcome to a very special video where we're going to be making games in a LEGO Winter Wonderland using the Unity game engine. Recently, Unity released their LEGO Micro Game, which is essentially a game template you can use to create a third-person platforming game. It's a really great starting point if you're just starting to learn game development because you can start implementing game logic without needing to know how to program just quite yet. And if you are familiar with the Unity game engine already, then you can use the LEGO Micro Game to quickly prototype type some ideas that you may have or just work on your level design skills using some awesome Lego assets. One unique thing about the Lego micro game is it has these so-called behavior bricks which you can clip on to different Lego bricks within the game in order to add some certain behavior to your game. And this behavior is what allows players to interact with your game. So today we're going to be going through a bunch of these behavior bricks. I'm going to show you how you can add them to different things within your game and showing you how to control them and configure them to your needs. But before we get into all that, I'd just like to thank Unity for sponsoring today's video. I've been using the Unity game engine for several years now, so I'm extremely excited to be partnering with them to show you about their Unity LEGO micro game. If you haven't done so already, make sure you download the Unity game engine to get started. I will leave you some links down in the description below. So for some of the prerequisites, make sure you're on the latest version of the Unity hub. You need to be on at least version 2.4.0. As far as versions of the actual editor, you're gonna to need to be on 2019.4. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and create a new project using Unity 2019.4. On the templates section, make sure you scroll down to select the LEGO micro game, and then you can download that and then we're gonna go ahead and create a new project based off of that template. And it does ask you to verify your birth date because according to the terms of service, you do need to be at least 18 years old to use the LEGO micro game. Once it starts loading, now's a good time for us to open up the Unity Asset Store. And we're gonna go ahead and download a winter and holiday themed pack off the Unity Asset Store. So if you just do a search for LEGO, you're gonna come across Santa's Brick Shop, which is kind of a add-in for the LEGO micro game. So make sure you are signed in with your Unity account and click add to my assets. And then once your project is loaded on your computer just go up to window and package manager make sure you select the tab for my assets and then scroll down to find Santa's brick shop once you have that just go ahead and download it and import all the assets into your project and once you are in the Lego micro game there are some interactive tutorials for you to follow that you can use to just kind of familiarize yourself with how building bricks works in unity now then we can jump into this little demo scene that I've created here and we can walk around and see one of Santa's best friends Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer so um, he is here, but he's looking, he's looking a little stiff. So let's actually jump out of play mode and we can start to add some of these behavior bricks to add some life to our game. So in your project hierarchy, you'll see the Lego folder and then under that will be prefabs and under that will be one for Lego behavior bricks. So we'll drag the alive behavior brick into the scene and then we'll go ahead and place it on the back of Mr. Rudolph here. When we enter play mode, you'll see that Rudolph is here and he kind of starts uh, wiggling around, jumping around. He's kind of making some sounds because um, that's what the alive behavior brick does. Now, let's say we want to hitch a ride on Mr. Rudolph here. We want to go over to that platform over there. Well, we can do that simply by adding on the move behavior brick. So we'll just drag in the move behavior brick. And we'll just go ahead and put this on top of the alive behavior brick here. Now, one thing to note that's important about the move brick is you'll see that whichever way this arrow is pointing, is whichever way is gonna move. And you'll see there's actually a little gizmo. So there's kind of this green line that comes out and there's this green circle at the end. So that's basically where that behavior brick is going to end once that move cycle has been completed. And of course we don't want Rudolph moving to the side, that would look kind of weird. So we can actually just use these kind of rotation arrows on the sides here to actually rotate the brick by 90 degrees. So once we do that, you see that the arrow is now facing forward and this gizmo is facing forward as well. Now, if we go over to the inspector, we can check out some of our options. So distance is basically the number of bricks of distance that it's going to travel. Time is the amount of time in seconds that it's going to take to travel that distance. Pause is how long in seconds that it's going to pause at that destination point. For collide means it's gonna stop if we collide with any other object and then repeat if we have that check, it's basically going to continue the cycle over and over. And for most of these behavior bricks, it does have an audio property, which is kind of like a little audio clip that will play when the behavior brick is doing its execution. Uh, so now we don't necessarily want to have any audio for this particular case, so we're just gonna go ahead and put the audio volume down to zero. So now when we do enter play mode, you'll see that uh, Rudolph, he's using both the alive as well as the move commands. Of course, we can jump on him and uh, kind of hitch a ride over to this platform here. So once we're over here, we can kind of jump on this platform 
And um, unfortunately, it looks like we can't get all the way up. So we're gonna need to add some behavior to this platform that's going to basically raise this platform up so we can get up there. So we'll go ahead and drag in the elevator behavior brick, all right? And then we can go ahead and put that right on the side of the elevator here. You'll see that it's gonna be going up 15 units of distance, which is gonna bring it right up to about here. So that's just going to be actually a little bit higher than this platform. So maybe we can just bring this distance down just a little bit. We'll say probably right about there, 13 units. That looks pretty good to me. And all the other defaults look pretty good as well. So we'll go ahead and enter play mode here. So now when we enter play mode, you'll see that the platform is going up and down. It's gonna take about two seconds to go up. It's gonna pause at the top for one second. It's gonna take about two seconds to go down. It's gonna pause for one second down at the bottom and it's just going to continually repeat that forever. So now that we're kind of at the top here and it looks like we do have a couple presents that are floating in midair. However, we can't use these right now to actually get across to the other side. You know, even with this crazy super double jump that Santa Claus has, um, we kind of get stuck down here. And so one of these just kind of like game design things to keep in mind is if you ever have one of these platforming sections where your player can get stuck somewhere, make sure they always have a way to get back to the starting point. So that's why I've just put in uh, one of these little platforms back over here so we can get back to the starting point. Anyways, let's go ahead and add some motion to these presents here. So on this first present, we're gonna go ahead and drag in the platform behavior brick. We can just go ahead and put it right on the top middle here. And then you'll see that basically according to this gizmo, it's gonna go out to right about here. Now we wanna go a little further, so we're gonna stretch this distance out to say 55. And over two seconds, that's gonna be pretty fast. So we're gonna put the total time to eight seconds. So basically it's gonna take eight seconds to travel from here all the way down over to here. Now we can kind of see what that looks like. We just have this kind of floating present that is now floating back and forth. Again, it takes about eight seconds to complete the full cycle. However, it's looking a little bit stiff right now. It's kind of weird that there's just this, you know, present floating back and forth. So let's add another behavior brick to this to make it fit in the world a little bit more. And so actually before we add another behavior brick is I can show you that these behavior bricks can pretty much be anywhere. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, grab this behavior brick here we're actually gonna go ahead and place this on the underside of this present here, just so it's kind of a little bit more hidden and out of the way. So it still looks like a present and we're still gonna have the behavior brick properties that it has. The next behavior brick that we're gonna go ahead and add in is the hover behavior brick. So we'll go ahead and put this in. Now what this hover behavior brick does is it's basically going to make the present kind of float up and down in the air. And again, it's just gonna make it look a little bit more alive and make it feel like it fits in the world. So now when we go back to our present, you can see that it's kind of going up and down just nice and smooth and it just makes it feel kind of a little bit more believable for this kind of magical, mystical world that we're in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add these other behavior bricks to the presence. Make sure we're gonna rotate this one by 180 degrees because it's gonna be traveling in the opposite direction. So now when we come back here, you see that we have our three presents uh, just kind of moving back and forth as well as bouncing up and down just because of that hover property. So now let's see if uh, Superman Santa here can get across this little platforming section using his amazing double jump abilities. And we got to the last one, so now we can just hop right off to the end. And of course, it wouldn't be something Santa-themed if there wasn't some you know, weird creepy gnome just completely staring us down all the time. No matter which way Santa goes, no matter where he goes, you're gonna see that this gnome keeps staring at us. The reason that this gnome is always staring at us is because he does have a behavior brick attached to him. You see that it's this one right here. This is known as the look at behavior brick. So if we go look at some of the look at properties, you'll see that the first one is the look at, and this is basically the target of what it's going to be looking at. So right now we have it set to the player. So it's basically always going to be aligning this little eye on the front of the behavior brick with the target. So in this case, again, it's the player. However, we can select this little drop down and we can select a specific transform that we want it to be always following. Of course, we can also set the speed and then we can also change it if we want to uh, rotate it horizontally, vertically. So basically be following it up and down as well as freely, so that's kind of you know side to side and up and down. So this is kind of a handy one if you do want to add in kind of some enemy AI to your game, so it's always gonna be facing the player. Anyways, moving along here, we do see that now we're getting to this little Christmas tree that's playing us some nice music here. 
Um, the reason that it's playing some music is because it does have the audio brick down at the bottom here. The only thing to note about the audio behavior brick is this spatial property checkbox here. Basically, that's going to determine whether it's 2D audio or 3D audio. So if you have this unchecked, that's basically going to be 2D audio. So it's going to basically play the music as if it were background music. And no matter where you are in the world, it's always going to sound the same. Now, because we do have this spatial box checked, that's going to be 3D audio. So you're only really going to hear it when you get close to it. Um, as you start to get farther and farther away, then the volume of the music gets lower and lower. And it's rotating around just by this rotation behavior brick here. Now looking at the rotation behavior brick, so the angle is the amount of degrees that's going to be rotating in one cycle. Time is how long it's going to take to get there. And then pause would be how long it's actually going to pause on that final rotation for. And right now we do just have this set to repeat. And with a pause value of zero and a repeat value, then this is just basically going to be spinning forever and ever. Now, one thing to be aware of with any of these rotation behavior bricks is it's always going to rotate about the axis of the actual behavior brick. So to demonstrate this, if we drag in the rotation behavior brick, and we'll go ahead and put this on the uh, hook end of the candy cane. So now when we enter play mode, something kind of interesting is gonna happen. You're gonna see that it's actually rotating around basically the axis that we have Put it on you know normally when you think of a candy cane rotating especially when it was stuck in the ground like that you'd think that it would kind of rotate around the bottom main part of the candy cane um, but again because these rotation behavior bricks rotate around the axis we kind of get this interesting behavior here all right so now then let's say santa claus wants to travel all the way down to the end of the candy cane forest However, it looks like that's kind of a long ways down so we don't necessarily want to walk the whole way it's, it looks like it's probably going to take a little while uh, luckily, we do have this sleigh here, and we can demonstrate how we can start to add in a little bit more complexity to some of these behavior bricks by actually combining them together. So you see that we do have the move behavior brick on here, and as you can tell, that's basically going to move the sleigh all the way down to the end of the candy cane forest here. However, you'll see that it's actually not moving right now. When we added some of these move behavior bricks onto other things, they would basically just start moving right away. However, that's not the case because we do have this trigger behavior brick here, and this is known as the touch trigger. So if we were to click on the touch trigger, you can see that we have the scope set to connected bricks, which basically means that any other bricks that this brick is connected to, it's going to sense touch on them. So if we touch you know, any part of this sleigh, then it's going to you know, trigger a certain set of actions. So what are the actions that are gonna take? Well, we have this target and it's set to connected actions. If we wanted to get a little bit more complex with this, we could click the drop down and we could change this to a specific set of actions. So not necessarily things that are connected to the sleigh. And then for sense, we have this set to the player. So that means it's going to detect when the player is touching it as opposed to something else. For repeat, this would basically mean that it's going to continue triggering it as long as that certain condition is met. However, in this case, we basically just want it to travel down to the end of the candy cane forest and stop so we have that unchecked. So back into play mode here, we can just go ahead and jump on Santa's sleigh. And you can see that we're traveling all the way down to the end of the candy cane forest very quickly, which is a totally awesome and fun method of travel. I would highly recommend it. And so now we are over here, kind of over at this end of this little demo level. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add in a little bit of an objective for our player to follow when they're playing our game. So in this case, we want the player to collect all the presents. So the way we can do that is by adding a win condition to our game. So we can drag in a behavior brick called win, and we can just go ahead and put this on this rock right here. It can really be anywhere in the level, but I just like to have it, you know, on something like a rock or something just to kind of keep things a little bit more organized. But again, you can have this wherever it can be hidden out of view of the player or it can be shown. Now, if you just have the win block in here by itself, then when you go ahead and play your game, then you're just going to win right away. So there's no real challenge to that. So we do have to add kind of a little bit of a trigger in order to basically trigger the win condition. So we could use something like the touch trigger if we wanted, just like we used on the sleigh, in which case if the player were to touch that, this specific block here, then they would win the game. However, because we wanna make it so the player wins when they pick up all the pickups in the world, we're gonna go ahead and add in the pickup trigger. So we'll go ahead and put the pickup trigger onto this block here. And you'll see that for pickup trigger, we have again the target dropdown for connected actions or specific actions. 
So we'll do connected actions because we are connected to the same block that the win condition is. For mode, we can have this trigger when all the pickups are picked up, a specific amount of pickups have been picked up, or a specific set of pickups have been, well, picked up. So in this case, we want to have the player collect all the presents, so we'll just say all pickups. And then these present pickups are located under add-ons and Lego models and pickups, and we can just go ahead and drag one of these presents down into our world here. So now you can see once we enter play mode, we have this thing in the upper left corner that says collect all the pickups. So of course we can just walk over to any of these presents and you'll see that we basically collect them and then our counter increases. So now we're up to three out of five. So we actually do have two more pickups and um, kind of have a feeling they might be hidden into these presents here. So we can go up on these and you'll see that uh, this does have a touch trigger on it. So if we go ahead and jump on this touch trigger, let's see what happens. Oh, you see that this present explodes because we do have the exploding behavior brick. So again, that's another behavior brick that we can use to add an explosive force to things in our world. And of course, it'll break up all the bricks around it. So then we can go ahead and collect this next pickup here. Now, before moving on to this final present, we do need to watch out for Mr. Frosty the Snowman here, who is um, shooting all these snowballs out at us. You'll see that he does have some behavior bricks attached to him. So if we look around the back, he has these two, uh, these are actually random triggers. So basically these triggers are going to trigger the uh, behavior at a random time interval. So it's basically causing him to randomly rotate around because he does have the rotate behavior brick attached to him. And then it's also making him shoot out these snowballs at random time intervals because you see that this green behavior brick, there's kind of this little hole on the front and then that's gonna be shooting out a specific projectile from that behavior brick. So some kind of interesting things going on there. Anyway, so let's open up this last present. Again, it explodes and these bricks fly everywhere and we can go ahead and pick up the final present and then you'll see that Santa Claus does a nice little dance in victory. So now that you can see how some of these behavior bricks work, I'm gonna pop open the demo scene that basically comes with the Santa's brick shop here to show off a couple cool and interesting ways that we can combine these behavior bricks. So anyways, we'll walk around here and we'll actually walk up to this fireplace with a nice little chimney attached to it. And you'll see that as we get close to it, the, a little E pops up for prompting us to press the E key. And that's because there is a behavior brick known as the uh, input trigger attached to this. So when we actually press the E key, it's going to activate the elevator behavior brick, which is gonna bring us up to the top of the chimney. Um, you'll see that now we'll actually hop on this sleigh and we'll start flying around. And this is a really cool use of these behavior bricks on this sleigh here. So you'll see that there's actually three behavior bricks inside of it here. So there's uh, actually the move behavior brick, which is basically causing the sleigh to always move forward. And then there's also the rotate behavior brick, which is making this um, sleigh just be constantly rotating. So that's how we can kind of get it to fly around in a circle. You see that we also do have the hover behavior brick on here. So that's just making the uh, sleigh just kind of float up and down a little bit just to make it feel like it's flying in the air. So I, I do think that's a really cool and unique use of these behavior bricks. And it's a, a cool way that we can add, you know, good behavior to our game. So anyways, that's a little overview about how we can use the behavior bricks in the Lego micro game to start to add some cool and unique features to our game. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just kind of a fun little holiday themed video for you. I do encourage you, if you do have some extra time over the holidays, feel free to download the Unity game engine and start playing around with the Lego micro game and some of these behavior bricks. Again, if you are brand new to game development, this is a great way for you to start getting involved in some programming of game logic. And if you are a little bit more experienced, remember this is a great opportunity for you to prototype some ideas that you may have in your mind as well as kind of work on your level design skills, again, using all these really cool Lego assets. Once again, major thank you to Unity for sponsoring today's video. Really excited that I could partner with you to bring you this video about the Lego micro game. Of course, I'll have all the relevant links in the description below for you to download the Unity game engine. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about video game development. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season, and a fantastic end to 2020. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>